Anybody up for a little hybrid talk today? We have right here, woo, the 2020 Toyota Highlander Hybrid LE model. I'm gonna show you what makes it so special, why it's unique, why it's different, and why you really might want one. I'm the biggest fan of this new profile. Look at these sleek contours here. It flows aerodynamically. It looks sophisticated. It looks classy. It looks luxury. This is something that a lot of different types of people would be attracted to. One of the reasons why it has this profile is because Toyota's employing the TNGAK, it's Toyota New Global Architecture platform. And what that allows is it's higher strength steel. So it has a stiffer unibody construction that allows you to have better handling. It also allows the use of retuned multi-link rear suspension. It gives you better gas mileage and it gives you a more open space and better styling. So a lot of different benefits to that new platform. Let's do a walk around so you can get the whole scope, the whole picture. I have mentioned before in the past, people give me all sorts of suggestions about my videos. And one of the ones people would like to see is a full view of the whole car, not just individual clipped together sections. So let's do that. This vehicle here, the Highlander, it's the best-selling midsize SUV in the country. It has been since 2016. The fuel mileage on the hybrid, it's 24% better than the last generation, which averaged 29. This one, if it's all-wheel drive, it'll average 35 miles a gallon. If it's front-wheel drive, which this LE is, then it's gonna get 36 MPG. That is huge, huge, folks. When we're talking about engine performance, probably the best thing to do is to compare that to the gasoline Highlander. So let's imagine that right over here or right over here, we've got our 3.5 liter V6 engine. That's gonna produce in the gasoline Highlanders 295 horsepower. The hybrid has a little bit different story. This works with a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, but it's in combination with two different electric motors and that generates more low end torque it also helps you out with horsepower. It was advertised at first that this was going to be a vehicle with 240, 240 horsepower. This one has 243 net system horsepower, so it's a little bit of an improvement once Toyota got all their final statistics and testing out of the way, so that's good for us. We'll be trying that out in a future video on a test drive so we can see how does it start up from zero? How does it get to your top cruising speed? How well does it do? Now. This is not an eight-speed automatic transmission like gasoline, friends. It is going to be continuously variable transmission. So it's electronically controlled, continuously variable transmission. So what that means to you is it's very smooth accelerating between zero and your top cruising speed. Please don't be scared off of the term CVT. I think once you try this one, I think you might like it a lot. So it has multi-link rear suspension, which is nice because it allows it to tighten up, very responsive handling, going on a highway off-ramp as you're going around a winding curve or a country road, but it's smooth gliding. It's very smooth, it's very quiet. Part of that is because of that new platform, but it's gonna give you a better ride quality, better road trip, family quality, so you won't hear road noise or wind noise or engine noise as much. This is a big, big benefit. Notice the hood insulation here. People are glad because the 2020 RAV4 added this to their vehicles. It's got a prop rod. So it does hold it into place. I'd like to see pneumatic less, who wouldn't? Boom. Let's focus now on the front end of the vehicle. How does that make you feel? What vibe are you getting from it? It has Toyota's new signature trapezoidal grille. This is a, what I call a 3D gloss black pattern there. And then it's also, there's a bug on me. And then it's got the metallic accent piece here. And then you'll know from looking far away, if it's got this bright blue Toyota hybrid signature, Duh, we're talking about a hybrid. If it's got the black and chrome, then it's just the gasoline version. So I'm going to start it up. What I want you to notice is when you first start up a hybrid, inside it'll say ready in a little oval. It'll say ready. That means it's ready to start driving, but it's going to operate at low end in electric. The gasoline will kick on very, very soon. Within about 10 seconds,
and then the gasoline kicks on. So for about 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so, it's gonna operate just in electric. It would also be at low end when you're moving, it would be electric, like in the parking lot, you can have it in EV mode, so it's just electric. But then the gasoline's gonna kick in, and the higher you go, the faster you go, it'll use more gasoline and less electric. When you take your foot off the gasoline and let it coast in or you're braking, it'll shut down the gasoline and just operate in electric. That's how you regenerate power to the battery. So this has Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. It also has LED fog lights, LED daytime running lights, and then LED headlights. It's a full complement of LED package, which is a huge benefit. Look at the ground clearance here. Every model that you see in a Highlander right now is gonna have an 8.0 inch ground clearance. So that means you can get over rocks and sticks and maybe if there's a brick in the road or a stump or something like that hopefully you'll be able to get over it so it's got to be 7.7 .7 inches or less so that's a stump so now toyota safety sense 2.0 we've added in things like lane tracing assist keep you centered in your lane road sign assist it picks up do not enter signs yield signs stop signs the speed limit sign this camera right here reads those speed limit signs it's so smart you guys because it can actually tell you if you go to a new sign, as soon as it passes, whoa, it's 35. That way you know if you're speeding or not. So you can avoid getting a ticket. You can avoid being reckless. So it's only designed to help you. And it doesn't say, hey, yo, you're speeding. It outlines it in orange, just subtly, softly. You can set up a visual cue too, where it goes bing, to let you know that you're gone over the speed limit. You might want to slow down. Happy to report on this Highlander LE Hybrid, you're going to see front and rear disc brakes so it improves the stopping power. You'll also see the fuel tank is 17.1 gallons on every hybrid. If you get a gasoline model, it's 17.9 gallons, so a little bit different there. It also has smart key auto open, push button start, so in a dark parking lot, if you're by yourself and you walk up to it, you don't need to fumble for your keys in your pants pocket or the purse you're holding or whatever. You just put your hand on the handle, beep beep, it unlocks it. You can lock it by putting your finger right there on these two little parallel lines. It also has turn signal indicators, nice. It's got blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert. It lights it up in an amber yellow color right in the mirror where you're looking anyway to see if it's clear, which is nice. 18 inch alloy wheels. What do you think of the profile? There's a plane coming, so I'm getting closer. What do you think of the profile? What do you think of anything about the Highlander. Give me your deep thoughts. Let's also talk about this LE trim level and how it corresponds with the last generation. If you get the L model of a Highlander, that's correlating or matching up with last year's LE model. Now, if you get the LE in the 2020, that's matching up with the LE plus of the 2019 model. So you get that LE plus from last year, which was confusing to kind of figure out where it fit in the whole scheme of trim levels. Now that's the LE. So I like that it has the powered lift gate. It's not foot operated. You have to go to limited or platinums to do that. Plain power lift gate right here. As it's coming down, notice the backup camera there. I'm gonna talk a little closer because the plane, it's got LED tail lights and stop lights. Do, 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 do. Love me some planes. So, LED tail lights and stop lights, they allow you to see faster and quicker if you're behind them and you stop, then they can respond quicker. So that's a good thing there. It's also got chrome accent that you see. Now, one thing that you won't see in this year's model, it does not have another plane. It does not have the opening top hatch. That's one thing. A lot of people didn't want that. They didn't need it. It also messed with some of the, the uh, electronics in the vehicle. So Toyota decided to scrap that in favor of one open up and down. Also, notice on the side here, I'm going to bring this in so you can see this little nub here. It's a vortex generator that actually pulls air in closer to the vehicle so that you get less wind resistance and better efficiency. Class, let's look at the vortex generator. There it is. See it? Vortex generator. Go, go gadget, vortex generator. I want to show you the storage space. Last year's generation, the third generation Highlander, it had about 13.8, 13.9 cubic feet for storage behind the third row seats. 
They've improved that. The vehicle is longer by about just a little bit over two inches, 2.36 inches, I think, but it allows for more storage space. So now you have 16.0 cubic feet behind here. What we want to look at here is how easy it is to lower, watch this, lower the third row. Now you open up 48 cubic feet of storage space. And then if you lower the second row, it's gonna allow for 84 cubic feet of storage space. So it really opens up the possibilities of how you can configure luggage along with your family size for the most optimal space for everyone involved on a road trip. Let's lower this so you can see the whole works. I just got a new iPhone 11 Pro. The camera is fantastic. I'm going to be filming a lot of my videos with this technology now because it's so crystal clear. Speaking of crystal clear, I have clarity when I'm in the back seat. Look at all this legroom space. This is huge. And you can lower the seat a little bit so you can relax, recline, that kind of stuff. There's a seat pocket here and seat pocket here for the kids or backseat passengers to store books or their electronics, that kind of stuff. There's also a nice, very firm, but it's comfortable armrest. And it's, it's not even rounded, it's just kind of flat. So that's nice. Two deep cup holders here, so that's a good thing. This is a hard middle seat here. I don't know if it, I'd say it's the most comfortable for like a long road trip. It'd be fine going to a restaurant with the whole family. And then this one right here, very, very comfortable seats. The sport fabric is very nice. You can see the pattern here. Very cool stuff. I'm actually in the third row right now. I want to show you the air vents. So they supply air for the second and third rows. But also look down here. We've got digital temperature controls and also two rear USB ports. Total of five in there. So lots of room. Lots of connectivity ability. Lots of electronics and technology, I love it. And now we're gonna look at the great visibility and this nice open interior, no standard sunroof on the LE. That's something we might wanna know. Really good visibility here. Notice the two different storage shelves, one underneath the center multimedia display, one by the passenger. So you can put phones, keys, wallets, anything that you don't want on you while you're driving on a road trip. I'm sitting in the third row right now and I do have a good amount of room. It wouldn't be anywhere where I'd wanna sit for a long road trip from here to Washington DC, 300 miles, 600 miles, that kind of a thing. But it's fine for traveling for short distances. There's, if you can see my feet are right there, but you can also, my knees, but you can adjust the middle seat forward and backward and it allows for a little bit more room than it did in last year's model for sliding for the third row. And this is right here. You notice that the seat's missing. I've got it folded down just so you can kind of see how I would sit with this particular vehicle like that. I can also recline a little bit as well. Wouldn't that be nice if we had a power driver seat on an LE Highlander? Well, we do. So this is up all the way. So if I'm shorter, let's say you're a five foot person, you can see up over the hood just fine. It's very easy to see over the steering wheel, but let's say you're taller. I'm going down, 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 down. Now that would be pretty trippy, right? That's wicked cool. I wouldn't suggest doing that while you're driving, but you can lower the driver's side all the way. So let's say you get tired and you need to stop on a road trip and you're the only one in the car. You can just chill out and relax, put a pillow there, sleep an hour, then you're ready to go again. So that might be the benefit I see with this one here. The steering wheel, it adjusts in and out or up and down. Let's get funky, 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 funky. 
And then the steering wheel controls are nice and easily laid out so I can do most functions. One of the most important things for the driver is to be able to access all the buttons, the controls and dials, and that includes the multimedia display. It's very easy to reach all of the information here right on this large eight inch screen. Also the temperature like that. Very easy to get to all the buttons and controls and dials, including the USB ports, the three USB ports up here, the parking brake, the electronic brake hold. I've got access to it also. It makes it ergonomically very, very convenient and safe. Safe. This is the energy monitor. It tells you when you're using electric power, when you're using the gasoline engine, and when you're recharging the battery. So every time you slow down and coast or put your foot on the brake, it's gonna send all the arrows going right to the battery. So you know that you're doing a good job if your goal is energy efficiency, fuel efficiency, you're doing the best you can. One tip to get better gas mileage, if there's nobody behind you, you can start your deceleration into a traffic light or a stop sign Start it sooner, take your foot off the gasoline and then you're not burning any fuel for a longer distance, it'll save you on MPG. So we've got audio, which is Bluetooth. I use that a lot. Sirius XM, I use that a ton. Yacht Rock Radio. It also has AM and FM as well, but now you can pull into your other apps through Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you can do uh, Amazon Alexa commands, but you can also use Waze, Google Maps, iMaps, and then the controls right here for temperature are real easy to use. You can also check uh, infotainment, the phone, menu, maybe I wanna check, info, vehicle history alert, eco mode. See, we're using electric right now. And then watch when we speed up. Recharging the battery. Now it's gonna use gasoline. We're gonna speed up a lot. Just like that. And then we're recharging the battery because I'm slowing down my foot's on the brake. So as I'm going up to a light or a stop sign, why not take your foot off the gas and save fuel? If that's your goal, that's why you're buying a hybrid, baby. And I'll just show you the digital speedometer because I think it's nice it's a good feature and safely you can look at your speed look at all those tires get a feel for the ambiance of the passenger side here so this does not have height adjustable for passenger it does allow you to lower the back of the seat raise and lower that one our storage shelf we do need to know what the glove box looks like it's nice and big there see those usbs you can put your phone maybe on the left hand side it's a 12 volt circular port so you can plug in well frankly circular devices <laughs> electronic parking brake and brake hold it also has different driving modes it's got sport mode normal mode eco mode ev is for just electric mode at shorter distances and also lower speeds like under 20 25 12 volt circular port but it's a really nice deep storage spot here if you get xle and above you're going to see the chi wireless charging there that you lift up really easy to use that let's get a feel for the whole cabin here why not i like the leather wrap steering wheel it's easy to grip it's comfortable it's smooth like a Colt 45. Automatic high beams, this is the power lift gate. Just notice down here, this is where the gasoline door is and also the hood release. A little pocket for change, I think. Make that change. Then we got all our family that we can see here. Highlander strong, Highlander proud. 4.2 inch multi-information display that gives us valuable pieces of information about our car as we're driving it. Safety features there. Nice, nice. Let's go back. The fuel mileage won't be very good because I'm sitting here burning fuel, but we can reset that. Boom. Yeah. 
And then up top, we've got a really good safety feature here, SOS, it's for Safety Connect. So they will call you if the airbags go off and you, um, if you don't answer, they'll send emergency personnel to your car because you might be in trouble. This is a little spy thing, so you can see me with my iPhone. You can also look at people in the back and they can see you. And then we've got a slider with a lighted, get it, Jeff, get it, get it, get it, you can do it. We did it. A lighted mirror. Ooh, a plane. I don't know if we can see them though. Where are they? See plane. I personally think the LE hybrid is gonna be very popular, both for the pricing and also for the features. So the hybrid LE, Moon dust with black interior, made in Princeton, Indiana. The factory MSRP is 38.2. So safety ratings are not out yet. I expect them to be very good. You can combine for 36 MPG. It's 35 for the all wheel drive. So if you're in a Northern state or maybe you're in Colorado, that kind of thing, you might want the all wheel drive. Or maybe if you go to the beach or the mountains a lot, maybe. Notice the moon dust has a special color charge of 425. You'll see that on things like Blizzard Pearl or you'll see it on Ruby Flare Pearl, those kind of colors. Check out the features here. Eight airbags. Love the all LEDs. Okay, so there's the MSRP. 1120 to deliver it from the factory to any dealership. The regional port kind of finished it off. They customize it with carpet mats paint protection, rear bumper protector that we saw, and a cable charging package. So that puts us at just over 40,000, 40,635 for this beast. My analysis is this Highlander Hybrid is worth a second look. It's worth a first look for sure, but it's very comfortable, it's very smooth, it's really quiet when you accelerate, but the spacing in here, there's a lot of room for taller people or shorter people. You're gonna be the best judge of that when you test it out yourself. I love the electronics, the safety features, Toyota Safety Sense. You just can't beat that now. It helps you prevent front collisions, side collisions. When you're changing lanes, nighttime driving, it helps with distractions and also blinding people with those automatic high beams. It's really, really a good benefit. And I think you can all benefit from it. I like the larger multimedia screen, eight inches, or you can go up to the 12 inch one, 12.3 inches on the Platinum that's standard, you can get it as an option on the Limited. So a lot of nice things, a lot of things in Highlander Hybrid's corner, and thumbs up, baby.